So at EchoBind, I've had the opportunity to do a handful of voice integrations with Alexa. And despite the end goal being able to talk to a machine, it's important to remember we're really just talking about communication. And as I prepared for giving this talk at, in Boston, I researched the history of how people have leveraged technology to communicate over the years. You can find this timeline of communication tools on Wikipedia, and, and I found out a couple interesting facts while looking at this. An unintended consequence of the Gutenberg press that was invented in 1440 was the need for copyright laws. You could basically make unauthorized copies of books much easier than by writing it by hand. And so in 1662, uh, copyright law was invented in England. And in 1897, the Oxford Diction English Dictionary introduced the word computer, referring to a mechanical communication or calculation device. Now, since I'm coming in from Boston, I'd be remiss to not mention Paul Revere, one if by land, two if by sea. Communication happens in all different forms. It could be a book, it could be a lantern, it could be a nod, it could be a wave. And despite all of these forms of communication, there's been a push for decades to return to our roots, to return to voice, and in doing so, creating natural language interfaces. So in 2011, this kind of went mainstream with Apple Siri, Amazon Alexa 2014, and Google Home just last year. And with these open platforms, with Alexa and Google Home, that is, we're able to add custom skills. So what does this look like? Well, if I ask my wife, Carrie, what time is it, or I ask her what's the current time, she knows to respond because I said her name, and she knows what I want to know based on deciphering what I said, even though I said it two different ways. Machines aren't all that different. I might ask Alexa, ask Amazing App for today's fun fact. Amazing App is our invocation name, and today's fun fact is our utterance. To put it a little bit more clearly, utterances, though, map to intents. In the same way that people have to decipher your intent based on what you say, machines do the same thing. So on Amazon's platform, we will define an intent schema, which looks something like this. And they might include slots, which would represent variables in what we say, which I'll talk about in a second. In addition, we have to define our utterances. So these utterances basically help, again, map that what you say to what you intend. And since you can say things different ways, you might define multiple utterances for the same intent. So what does this actually look like in a Phoenix application? Well, to talk about that, we might want to understand first the process and the flow of this. Voice data gets sent to Amazon. That gets deciphered, and then a request gets sent. That request is received by our API, which generates a response. We then we send that response to Amazon. That response is validated and then sent to the device. So if you win that, uh, that Echo Dot tomorrow and want to learn how to do this stuff, definitely come talk to me. So let's look at an example. Let's say I have an app that tells us what the primary colors are. So I ask the app, what are the primary colors? And I might have a function if I'm using this Phoenix Alexa package, hex package. Whoop. And I might have a function that looks like this. An intent request that takes three arguments, the, the connection, the intent, and the request object. And I craft a response, which is pretty simple, as you can see. And it will give a response like this back to Amazon. This is what gets sent to the device that actually outputs the speech. But what if I want to do something a little more interesting? What if I want to say, what do I get when I mix blue and yellow? Well, now I've got variables. Those variables change the response. Our function might change to look like this. We still have the same three arguments, but inside that request, we'll have those intent values. To take it a step further, we might want to ask, what do I get when I mix my favorite color and blue? Well, to do that, I need to know who the user is. So by adding an OAuth provider to my Phoenix application, I can add data specific to that user and then leverage that when crafting a response. So great, I can do this in Rails. I've certainly done it. So why Elixir? Well, when you craft a response, the factors might include who the user is. What are the slot values? If this is a long-running session where it's more than just one command, one response, what are those session variables? What are those values? And of course, what's the intent? 
pattern matching makes this much easier to determine what to say based on all the permutations that might exist for a given intent. This can open the door to things like a choose your own adventure story, where in having different answers given throughout a given session might change the output. It might change what, how the story goes on whether or not you took the sword. Thank you.